College Basketball Podcast. Amani Bates, the long-awaited decision that was supposed to happen Friday, decided to happen Wednesday, uh, threw us all out for a loop, but he has made his decision. He is now a Memphis Tiger. Uh, Sean, as the uh, Memphis hype man, uh, you, you obviously have to be thrilled. What does this mean for Memphis? Hey, look, I was high on Memphis when the season ended. I mean, you look at what they did in the NIT last year. Obviously, that's going to lead into what they're going to do this year, and they were pretty fantastic in the NIT. They knocked out everybody fairly easily except for Boise State, but Lester Quinones, who has uh, probably the shortest shorts in college basketball, was able to get a good putback late. They were able to win there, and they just looked more together. They played more complete. They passed up good shots for great shots, and before, they weren't even trying to get good shots. They were just taking the ball to the rim and missing pretty easily. They turned the ball over an obscene amount of times, but you know, looking forward into this season, obviously the big question is going to be the point guard play, and it's a very fair question. If that's your skepticism, I agree in a certain sense. Uh, Amani Bates said with Rob Doster and Jeff Goodman yesterday live on the field of 68 that one of the big reasons why he went to Memphis is because Penny Hardaway is not allowing to play point guard. And Penny Hardaway, even like you and I, we didn't really get to see Penny Hardaway play live. But like at the same time, we've seen him play. We just didn't get to see him play live in 1999. Yeah. So like YouTube we've seen highlights. him play on. Yeah, like we've seen him play in highlights. Everybody's seen him play in highlights. So at the end of the day, if a guy like Penny Hardaway is telling you that he's going to teach you to play the point guard position, you have to listen. And, you know, you have Earl Timberlake who can run the point a little bit. Lester Quinones who can run the point a little bit, even though he did a lot less last year than two years ago. And Alex Lomax, who's a very good glue guy kind of point guard there. And DeAndre Williams is a great playmaker inside. There's a lot of good pieces on on this Memphis team. It's all going to come together with how they mesh. But overall, I think you can't ignore the talent on this team. They can go legitimately 11 deep with Chandler Lawson coming in from Oregon, a guy who played serious, you know, solid bench minutes on good Oregon teams. Jonathan Lawson, who is, who's his brother. Joshua Minot, who's a top 45 recruit. There's definitely a lot of pieces on this Memphis team. And when you're thinking about recruiting for the future with Memphis, one thing you have to think about is as long as Penny Hardaway, Larry Brown, I don't know how much recruiting he's actually doing because he's 80 years old, and Rasheed Wallace, like if Rasheed Wallace and Penny Hardaway come knocking on your door, you can't ignore that. I mean, come on. Yeah, you, absolutely not. And, you know, I think the underrated thing about the kind of Rasheed Wallace and uh, Larry Brown pickup is the amount of, like, NBA type of experience they bring. They can tell Amai Bates, hey, you need to do this. And, you know, you you look at Larry Brown, you're like, oh, this man's, he's won an NBA championship, a college championship. Uh, And Ben Wallace has uh, certainly done done it all in the NBA. You can look at those two and say, okay, I want to learn from these two, you know, and Ben Wallace, I think probably will do. Rasheed Wallace. Rasheed Wallace, my bad. Uh, Rashid Wallace, I think he'll be more useful for a Jalen Duran, uh, just because like Duran is someone that you know might have to take like a kind of limited type of role where he's not going to be the focal point in the offense. Uh, and you know, Rashid Wallace was kind of someone who wasn't necessarily the focal point of the offense back when he was playing with the Pistons. I think that can kind of he can be a good mentor for Jalen Duran, and I think. Penny Hardaway will kind of be more of a mentor for my Bates, just kind of teaching him how to run the point. Uh, certainly that's something that Penny Hardaway knows very well. Uh, he'll kind of teach him a little bit. I I don't expect, you know, my Bates to come in, run the point, and it be completely smooth sailing uh, necessarily. Yeah, I think there'll be some bumps in the road. He'll have like some five, four, you know, something like turnover games. Uh, but at the end of the day, I think, you know, when you get to the NCAA tournament, that's where it all counts. And that's where I think you'll start to see this Memphis team playing some of their best basketball later in the season, kind of like they did this past season. Like early in the season, they they won some games. They certainly didn't look awful, but they certainly got a lot better late in the season. Uh, were, you know, half court bank in shot by Traymond Mark away from forcing overtime and probably I, I 
might say Houston wins that, but they could have easily have won that game. Uh, anything never know. In overtime. And yeah. then uh, they were very close to, to beating Houston again a week later. So uh, that's against a Final Four team. Memphis pushed them to the brink two straight games. I mean, that that at the end of the season, Memphis was playing like a top 25 team. I know throughout the season they weren't necessarily that, but uh, definitely at the end of the season – they were playing like a top 25 team. And now you bring in two high level, you know, talents like a Jalen Duran, like an Amai Bates. And uh, you know, bring in Earl Timberlake as well. Alex Lomax, all of a sudden, like he's now probably going to be relegated to bench role. Uh, you still have DeAndre Williams. I don't know how they'll necessarily work completely offensively with Jalen Duran, DeAndre Williams. But I mean, there's more than enough talent to make it work. Yeah, and here's what I would do for the starting lineup if I'm Penny Hardaway. Obviously, I'm not. But if I were and, uh, you know, this was my decision, I would probably go, you know, Quinones at the two, Bates at the one, uh, Nolly at the three, Williams at the four, and Duran at the five. But at the same time, you can change that up every game if you want to. You can go Timberlake at the three and move Nolly to the two. You can just go a bunch of different ways, which is really good because when you have that much uh, – depth on your roster and you can change the lineup in a variety of ways you become a very good team if the pieces mesh and I think a guy like Alex Lomax you're going to see him in the game late like if if Memphis is leading they're going to be the kind of team that go goes ahead and uh puts him in late and handles the ball because he has a very good turnover rate doesn't turn the ball over very often and I think he's going to be a very key player if Memphis will be good and one thing I wanted to touch on here is I've seen a lot of people kind of compare the Memphis team of two years ago to the Memphis team of this year. And there is some parallels you can draw there. Memphis had the top recruiting class two years ago with James Wiseman, Precious Achua, DJ Jeffries, Boogie Ellis, and they had the top recruiting class in the country this year. I, I get the comparisons, but it's a lot different because that year they had eight freshmen of their 13 scholarship players. Eight, that's a lot of freshmen. I mean, their only upperclassman was, was Isaiah Maurice, who played like 10 minutes a game. You look at this year, they returned their three best players from last season. Lester Quinones, Landers Nolly, DeAndre Williams, they all started. And then the Alex Lomax played a key role when he wasn't injured. Uh, Chandler Lawson played solid minutes at Oregon. So you have a lot of guys that are older. Nolly is a fourth-year junior. Quinones is a junior. Uh, DeAndre Williams is going to be 25 years old by the time the season starts. So they have some veterans on this team paired with the young talent that I think is going to kind of you know, make this different than it was the James Wiseman year. But also the James Wiseman year could have gone a lot better if a few things broke Memphis's way. It was just a terrible year, uh, and the circumstances just didn't play in their favor. Wiseman played three games, uh, left the team after the suspension. That's all fair. DJ Jeffries got hurt. Lester Quinones was hurt for a couple months. So they just had a ton of injuries that really limited their ceiling that year. And they still were a 21 team that probably you know was would have they were on the outside looking in but they were still in the ncaa bubble it's not like they were terrible yeah and the other thing too is they were playing without james wiseman they played three games with james wiseman they blew out two uh i uic was know. one of them yeah uic uh, they lost the to oregon ones. uic yeah. was one of them but and like even that oregon game they pushed oregon they had a chance kind of late uh, that's a good Oregon team too. So uh, I think if James Wiseman would have stayed the full season, they wouldn't have been necessarily a terrible basketball team. But um, at the end of the day, you know, he ends up going, uh, I guess, just heading straight to the NBA draft. And uh, that there goes that. But, I mean, you mentioned it with this team. You obviously add in Amaya Bates, Jalen Duran, Chandler Lawson. Jonathan Lawson. I mean, that's plenty of talent. You have Earl Timberlake as well, who uh, didn't necessarily play a whole lot at uh, Miami, but he was certainly, I think, someone that was very good, uh, has a lot of type of high upside level talent, and he's someone that could be you know, a big player as well. And then you look at elsewhere as we lose Sean here. Um, yeah, Landers Nolly. Lester Quinones, DeAndre Williams. That's a three-headed monster of players that are coming back. Uh, this Memphis team is set up to have some uh, high-level success, and I, I think they're pretty much a 
clear NCAA tournament team. Uh, and I would probably peg them as the favorite in the American. I obviously know Houston coming off a of Final Four bid. That's going to be, you know, they're going to be tough again this year. But, I mean, Memphis just has so much talent. I think they have to be pretty clearly uh, the favorite to win the American and contend for a national championship. 